final talk will be given by Dr. Chi, Chi Un Kim uh, from Samsung Medical Center. Uh, the topic of his talk will be proactive response for uh, prevention of in-hospital transmission of emerging uh, infectious disease, COVID-19. Dr. Kim, please. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Jiun Kim, and I am an internal medicine gastroenterology doctor at Samsung Medical Center. I would like to thank the organizers, Korea International Medical Association, for an invitation to share uh, Samsung Medical Center's experience with COVID-19 so far. And I would like to also thank the audience gathered here from around the world, um, when some of you may be at an odd time of the day. COVID-19 pandemic has affected all uh, healthcare systems around the world, and it has empowered us to change the way we take care of our patients. While public health officials had broader agendas to consider, hospital administrators had to rethink about delivering medical care in the safest manner possible to those infected and non-infected patients. When a pandemic such of this magnitude hits, most, of, most attention and care gets focused on the infected patients, but at the same time, it is just as important not to have disruption of care and to continue to care for the non-infected patients with acute and chronic medical problems. All hospitals have taken measures and countermeasures for COVID-19, and each hospital would have its own situation-specific challenges that need to be met to treat the infected patients and to limit the spread of the disease. So it is crucial to develop and share new ideas and concepts that can be applied effectively at each institution. This presentation will describe some of these proactive measures that uh, Samsung Medical Center have taken in order to prevent in-hospital in introduction and transmission of COVID-19. I would hope that many of the measures I, I'll mention today are already in place uh, in most of the hospitals around the world. And I hope that some of these ideas may be helpful to you. Here's a quick introduction to uh, Samsung Medical Center. It is an urban tertiary quaternary care academic hospital with almost 2,000 beds and 10,000 outpatient visits per day. There are over 5,000 medical professionals, including doctors, nurses, nursing assistants, and technologists, in addition to over 2,000 non-medical support staff. A in-hospital introduction and spread of a highly communicable infectious disease can be devastating in a medical facility of this size. Samsung Medical Center has learned a great deal from the MERS outbreak in Korea in 2015 and has been preparing for another similar outbreak in the future, which is now with COVID-19. This monumental task started by setting up a system that can quickly respond to an infectious disease crisis. A control tower risk management committee was set up, extracting expert members from existing departments. The risk management committee directed and made changes to usual hospital operations to deter and minimize the chance of in-hospital transmission. This included changing physical hospital structures, reassignment of employees, allocation of resources, and implementation of IT programs. Following slides will highlight some of these efforts. The risk management committee was organized immediately with hospital president, CEO at the top, and two branches. First of them, Infectious Disease Response Center, like a legislature and a government, was headed by an infectious disease doctor and put forth recommendations and guidelines regarding all aspects of COVID-19 crisis, from triage to treatment. The second branch, like an executive branch in a government, was responsible to find ways to execute those recommendations in a real-world hospital operations. Many departments collaborated to continue patient care. Multiple aspects of patient care delivery had to be re-evaluated and optimized to minimize chance of in-hospital transmission. Clinical areas, including inpatient units, outpatient areas, operating rooms, labs, test areas, implemented new guidelines from screening patients at registration to discharging patients after a test or hospitalization. 
Personnel reassignment with a rotation schedule was created to accommodate heightened screening procedures at the gates and to staff the new triage areas. Resources and supplies such as masks and other personal protective equipments needed to be tracked and allocated more efficiently. Reinforced disinfection procedures and plans to deal with increased medical waste was, were required. A new triage area had to be set up, while patient flow logistics such as use of dedicated elevators were worked out. New policies and guidelines needed to be promptly and effectively communicated to the patients, visitors, and employees. New IT programs were developed quickly and applied so that patient and empl employee information can be collected and reflected directly in the electronic medical records. An open, two-way commun communication is essential when responding to any new situation. All changes and new policies were delivered daily to employees by intranet emails, alerts, and via electronic, electronic medical records. Multiple platforms such as intranet messenger or anonymous announcement board were used for feedback and new ideas. A call center for employees was set up so that any misunderstanding could be clarified and ideas for improvement could be shared. A separate call center was operated for patients. A new outdoor triage area was set up on the top floor of an outside parking lot. A new outside ER triage table was set up to screen patients and visitors before entering the inside ER triage, which is already separate from the main ER. There are eight negative pressure rooms attached to this ER triage where persons under investigation may await for test results. Additional nine negative pressure rooms are available inside the hospital. Gates to access the hospital were reduced from nine to six to efficiently screen all people entering the buildings. Screening was also set up at entrance points from underground parking lots. Thermal imaging cameras were set up and two to six employees with proper protective equipments measured temperatures of all entrants and asked screening questions. This took a long time, but it had to be done. Hand sanitizers were placed for everyone's use. All entrants were required to wear a mask. Only one caretaker was allowed to assist hospitalized patients while prohibiting visitations. Outpatients who are scheduled for an office visit or a test were sent a mobile questionnaire using the most popular SNS and a mobile message encouraging to fill out the questionnaire form on the hospital website. Questionnaire consisted of symptoms and possible close contacts or exposures to COVID-19. About 30% of patients have filled this questionnaire prior to the visit. This may not seem like a high percentage, but resulted in significant reduction in workload for the hospital staff. The answers to the questionnaires were automatically uploaded to the patient's, le patient's electronic medical records. A color-coded tabs on the opening screen of EMR enabled providers to quickly identify patients according to their symptoms and exposures. A click on a colored co coded tab will show the patient's answers to screening questions. Hospitals and clinics can verify overseas travel history by having access to drug utilization review system set up by Korean government. This system can be possible because of a single payer national health insurance system with prescription coverage. A limitation applies to foreigners residing in Korea who are not enrolled in the National Health Insurance Program. Now we shift our focus on measures to screen and manage employees to self-check uh, so that we do not become a spreader. Samsung Medical Center has been sending out a quick mobile questionnaire for employees to self-check temperatures and symptoms twice a day. 
response rate has been above 90%, and all the responses are automatically recorded on the intranet system where supervisors can review and encourage continued participation. Employees can call the dedicated call center number for further directions if there are symptoms. For example, they may be instructed to go to the outdoor triage area for testing, then self-quarantine at home until results are known, usually within six to eight hours. Another mobile questionnaire is sent out each time when sporadic mini outbreaks breaks occur in the community. If an employee has potential exposure, he or she is instructed to go to the outdoor triage area for testing. Depending on the situation, he or she may be placed on active surveillance or self-quarantine until results are known. Employees are required to wear masks at all times in elevators, cafeterias, and shuttle buses. Side-by-side -side sitting in cafeteria are encouraged when possible while refraining from having a conversation at all. A large-scale meetings, including didactic lectures and conferences were suspended and replaced by online and teleconferencing. Same social distancing recommendations apply when employee, employees are not at the hospital. In the last few minutes, I would like to highlight the triage and patient flow process. The outdoor triage area is separated in two, one for asymptomatic, another for symptomatic. Each area has separate entrance and exit. Each tent is staffed by two doctors and one to two nurses in addition to two support staffs. A portable x-ray machine on the mobile clinic bus is utilized when needed with results available via PACS within minutes, um, which, sta which is stations right next to the parking lot. A symptomatic area is for patients who have outpatient appointments or scheduled hospital admissions from outbreak areas or facilities or close contacts of confirmed COVID-19 patients. These patients should be out of self-quarantine prior to the hospital visit, according to the government guidelines. Many of these patients may have had the testing done within the past three days with negative results and would not require this visit to the triage. Asymptomatic area is also for employees with potential exposure. Symptomatic area is for outpatients identified with fever and or respiratory symptoms from screening at the gates, clinics, test areas, or ER triage, as well as for employees with symptoms. Outpatient visits have been reduced by postponing non-urgent visits and utilizing telephone consultations. For outpatients arriving for their appointments, they are encouraged to wait in more spacious areas of the hospital whether inside or outside, rather than crowded waiting area until notified by a mobile message to meet their providers. If a new patient or accompanying person is identified with symptoms, they are advised to call the national hotline number and prohibited from entering the hospital. Number of inpatients was reduced by postponing elective procedures and surgeries. Certain patient groups, such as those who need emergent procedures, surgeries, ICU admission, or closed psychiatric unit, and pediatric and obstetrical patients are tested for SARS-CoV-2 virus, even without symptoms or epidemiological risk factors in order to minimize potential confusion and delaying care. Private rooms were prioritized for the patients with respiratory symptoms. Safety check round team identified and recommended improvements to minimize aerosol transmission in the high-risk care areas, such as endoscopy suites, bronchoscopy suites, asthma allergy treatment area, ENT treatment area, and dental clinic. 
I presented to you some of the proactive measures that Samsung Medical Center has taken in order to prevent in-hospital introduction and transmission of COVID-19. No response system is fail-proof, especially when it comes to dealing with new, highly transmissible infectious disease like COVID-19. What we can do is not to fear, but prepare. Constantly review, identify, and improve our practices in a systematic manner with open communication. There is no room for complacency and self-congratulations when thousands of people are dying each day still. We can all plan for the worst to address the situation rather than panic. Good luck to all, and thank you for your attention.